We got our wagon pulling in. Looking good on the wheels. All right, where's it at? Where's it at? Got us a spoiler. A little spoiler for the wagon. Not bad, not bad. It actually matches pretty well. So I helped him do the clear on this one. And this is a, this is a yachting one? Not a yachting. Or similar to a yachting one. Yeah. One of those. But this is a nice little spoiler for the wagon. Yeah, the clutch came out pretty good. Mm -hmm. Not bad, not bad. All right, one last look before the spoiler. We have some of the uh, adhesive there. It's like what I use for my spoiler, the Sikaflex kind of stuff. Kind of like window seal. But once it's on, it's on there like it's good. Like I can pull my car by my spoilers on there so well. <laughs> and we're doing a, a smidge back. Right. Try and let you lay the ears down first. Then... I'm gonna go like from the edge here, maybe like two mil or so. Yeah. Who's calling me? All right, my side's down. I am down as well. Good. Who am I? Yeah, you're about the same. That's good. And now we uh, we hold. Honestly, you can barely see the tape. I would just. Leave the tape it's fine mm -hmm. so we held it in place long enough for you to be like mostly set so now i'll just tape it leave it down let it dry the rest away oh yeah that looks good for just paint match out of a can yeah sure not bad i like it and of course the good old 2k clear coming in clutch giving it that nice gloss finish so let it sit for about 30 minutes and then it should be good to go all right it's been about an hour actually and let's see the test okay how's that side is that the tape or the ceiling <laughs> We'll pull the tape out and see. I think it's the sealant. Should be. I said I use the Sikaflex stuff that came from Rieger that I'd like hardened instantly and like I can pull my car by my spoiler. I almost guaranteed. This is a little bit different. Uh, I'm not sure the dry time on this. I find and it's kind of cold outside. So yeah, pull the tape off and we'll see. It seems like it's sturdy, but I can't know if the tape or not. You're right. Yeah. Oh, the thing's moving? Yeah. All right. Man, Give it a little fuck? shake. Oh, yeah, it's still pretty loose. Is it drying at all, or is it still like... I can't tell. I mean, it seems like it's kind of tacky, but... Oh, no, not at all. So, blue tape it is? Yeah, I'd say at this point, since it's not, like, drying properly, yeah. I would say we can pull it off, wipe it all off, and then we'll get some of the proper stuff yeah. and glue it down. That way, it's just all in there for good and not going to, like, fall off on you. Right. Yeah, we should be able to wipe that off still. All right, we're going to go ahead and wipe this stuff, hopefully, off, which is still not very, like, stuck on. It should be good. And then I still have some of this left, the Sikaflex. It's kind of old at this point, but I think hopefully it's still good to use. All right, and we're back. So thankfully all that came off, some uh, instant detailer cleaned up nicely. That's good to go. So no more, no more of that stuff. So hopefully this is still good to go. And your side's pretty much good. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely. Almost had to bust up the, uh, you know, the 50 grit and really get in there and just get everything off the side. But thankfully it came off no problem, so that's good. We're gonna get all of this off here and then try again. This stuff sticks like no tomorrow. I love this stuff. You sure you want the spoiler? Because it's not coming out after this. Yeah, go for it. All right. I'm going down now. Yep, good. And then slide forward just a little bit. That way? Uh, yeah. There you go. And now we wait. And now we wait. So it's only been about two minutes or so, and this thing's already, like, it's on there. The Sigaflex stuff is no joke. There's a little bit that kind of comes out. We'll have to go back once it dries and we'll kind of just clean that up. But I mean, it's on there. And it's only been like two minutes. All right, so here's a full look. We're leaving the tape on for right now. Just make sure it can dry fully. But there's the rear. And then from the uh, the side angle, like a little uh, backwards hat. I think wagons with spoilers look really cool. So there is that. And then aside from the spoiler, I've been collecting parts for the Savoy. That one go to the shop. I can put them on real quick. We've got a handful of pieces over here. We have a new nice leather shift boot. I got a very nice chrome shift bezel. Cool little piece, very 90s. Uh, these things are huge. The chrome hood struts, no more actual hood prop. These things are so much better. And then I also got a nice battery cover. This is out of a 97, I wanna say, but good shape, I'll have to clean up a little bit, but overall, not bad. So in the last video you guys saw, we put the blue interior in the Pink Floyd Golf. And I think the color combo of this green and that blue honestly looks perfect. And I said it should have came from factory like that. Now I wasn't sure if this color or any green at all ever came with blue interior, but Jordan found this awesome listing on eBay. Look at this, green cabrio. I'm not sure if this is electronic green or not, but green cabrio and wait for it. Bam, blue interior. 
How sweet is that? Might be hard to talk on camera, but it's all blue interior. Blue seats, blue carpet, everything's blue. So I don't know if it's factory or not, but there's another green Mark III with blue interior. Also, look at the price, 10 8 10 8 that's insane. And it has 136,000 kilometers. So this car here has less kilometers than this one does. And they want 10 8 crackhead prices. I don't know why it's that much. I don't think it's worth that by any means, but they, for some reason, think that car is worth that much money. They'll never get it, I don't think, but kind of cool. Green car, blue interior. I think it's sick. But other than that, there's not been much going on. I apologize for the lack of content. We're kind of like in between builds because the Savoy is gone, but it's coming back. We have more stuff to do. So like, we're not quite done with that car yet, which is why I have more parts coming and that kind of stuff. But we're kind of in between, between this car, the GTI, and I need a whole bunch of parts for this engine. And there's a lot going on, but also not a lot at the exact same time. Hopefully tomorrow I'm picking up a new lip for the Savoy as well, about 30 minutes away. I've been trying to reach out for parts pretty much for the past two weeks straight and people keep falling through or flaking or they want insane prices and just, it's just not working out. But hopefully soon I can have the content rolling again and get some more things done. And then I guess small update for this car, my green side markers here should be here on Monday. So we'll have green on the side and we'll have of course the green in the back. And then in the front, I'm probably gonna go ahead and just have a clear set of these uh, tinted. My friend has a guy over in Spain who can do it perfectly matched to the greens on the side because people want crackhead prices for the actual greens and it doesn't seem worth it to me. And then I've kind of found a set of dual rounds. I'm working on a price right now, but hopefully soon we'll have green, green, and just a whole lot of green in this car. Like I said before, the build on the Pink Floyd here is gonna be as 90s as I can possibly make it, which means we're doing three piece, three spoke wheels. And I've wanted three spoke wheels for the longest time. Either some Super Advents, the OZ Cygnus, there's a whole bunch of really awesome three piece, three spoke wheels. And I think this car with this build is the perfect candidate for it. I don't care what no one says, three piece, three spokes on a Mark III looks so good and so 90s. These ones here are the OZ Cygnus, beautiful wheels, and these are the Super Advent 3s. Again, just absolute beautiful. Look at that thing. That on there, or even these ones on there, it's so good, it's so good. I do wanna say though, this build will not happen overnight. All the pieces I want are very 90s, very hard to find, and they're all very expensive. Dual rounds, like full Votex kit, three-piece Super Advents, all that stuff is very expensive and very hard to find like actual authentic ones. So it'll take a little while to get it all done, but when it is done, this car is gonna be amazing. All right, boys, it's currently Sunday, about to go pick up the new lip for the Savoy, but my art design guy sent me something pretty cool. Ready for this, three, two, look at that boys look at that the hre in full dissection coming soon all right so we have about 25 minutes to our destination i don't know how it is but i always find such good deals so close to my house which is amazing and i just love it so the lip i'm picking up isn't super rare well i guess in the states it's a bit more rare um but over here it's not like anything super super rare but it's one of my favorite lips i think it's gonna look great on the savoy and I'm also getting a super good deal on it. And you guys know, I'm all about the good deals. Oh, you're about to get it. There's a camera right there. Look at him on the brakes. Look at him on the brakes. Did it flash? Oh, I got him. It flashed. Sucks to suck, my dude. Should shot in your journey. Idiot. What is this coming up? Yo, this is like straight down. I don't know if camera does justice, but so stairs are like this is like straight down. We're gonna make a left or right up here. Look at that little thing, little Fiat something. We're gonna make a right here and then we're there. If you have no brakes, you're gone. Like you are absolutely gone all the way to the bottom of this hill. Assuming with the polo here, this must be the house. All right, boys, easy enough. Look what we got. Got ourselves another Rieger GTX foot lift. And this one actually has the splitter as well. Like I said, this lip is hands down one of the best looking lips of the Mark III. It's not crazy, crazy rare, 
but it just looks so good and it's dusty as ever look at that he said he had it sitting for about two years he mounted it to the car then took it back off i mean it's like brand new like no scratches on it at all so super sick rieger gta front lip plus a splitter awesome score now i could have bought this lip and splitter from rieger themselves they still make all the parts brand new to this day but the lip itself is about 99 dollars. the splitter is like 30 to 40. i got both for 80 euro quick little drive save some money can't beat that the reason why i say this lip is more rare in the states than it is here to my knowledge still to this day rieger does not ship to the united states so you have to find a company that imports their products or find someone just to send it to you but i'm pretty sure still to this day rieger does not actually sell to the united states so you gotta find somebody whipping it the ship you one all right, the first thing we must do is get rid of all this uh, this dust. This is two-year-old German dust and it's gotta go. There we go. Now we're looking much better. I'll probably still go through, actually trim paint the entire thing, but at least the dust is gone. And it's looking, this thing looks so good. One of my favorite lips in the splitter. Makes it look super aggressive, I love it. Now obviously since the Savoy isn't here right now, we can't put it on the car, but we can test it on this car for now. And we can see it side by side next to Miley with her same lip just minus the uh, the splitter. So Reader GTX front lip, but this is the Vento version to fit the Vento bumper, obviously. No splitter, and then this is the same one for the Golf, that GTI bumper with the splitter. What do you guys think? Splitter, no splitter. Splitter, no splitter. Also, trim paint, no trim paint. Trim paint's just the best. It's the best. Miley also has the matching Reader GTX side skirts, which I love, and then on my wagon over here, I just love Reader products, they make good stuff. We have the rigger front lip for the uh, the Bora. They spent cool stuff and I like it. Now I showed this before, but I'm gonna show it again because people still argue with me and try and tell me the Vento bumper is the same as the rest. The Vento bumper is differently sized than all the other bumpers. Vento lips will not fit these. These will not fit those, just how it goes. So this is the lip from Miley. If you look right here, you can see the part number and it actually says for Vento right there. Part number and Vento. Looking at this lip for the Golf, right in there. Different part number. And you can see it says Golf 3 Cabrio, that kind of stuff. Vento, not Vento. This slip will not fit that bumper. The Vento bumper is different from every other one. Stop telling me it's the same because it's not. Different. I will say adding the splitter makes this slip. You can see how it's pretty flimsy for the most part. I mean, I hit the dirt at the Nurburgring going really fast and it didn't destroy it. So, I mean, it's strong, but you can see how it bends a little bit. With the splitter, there's very minimal flex. Like, the entire thing moves. It's a nice brace piece to kind of keep it from uh, shattering. Cabrio. So, quick change of scenery. We're currently in the city of Bonn because all of the cherry blossoms bloom and this whole street for like, what, two, three blocks is just pink. And we're doing photos for this one. So much pink, just everything is all on the ground. It's pretty cool though. All the cherry blossoms. My car. I was looking at you on accident. That's a good reason. Reloading. <laughs> He's reloading. All right. One, two, three. There we go. That's what I needed. That was good. Okay, cool. That was a good one. Three. That's good. Car. Right. Yes, I like it. I like it. Let's pull it back. Let's see. I kind of got it. There it is. You made it. I had to swap batteries fast, but I kind of got it. Okay. All right, we've taken like 200 photos, but look at this multivan in the brown. This thing is beautiful condition. I need a van. Yo, this thing is insanely clean. Like, I don't see any rust on this thing. Look at the rockers. Yo, this thing is so clean. And also an old like 70s bus just pulled over there. We're about to go see mad buses down here. I can't get over this thing. Like every bit, okay. all the window seals under the thing. <laughs> this thing is stupid clean. What? I love it. And the interior is sick too. That was a better one. Okay. All right, last but not least, look at this thing. 
And again, it's just like mint condition. There's no rust. There's nothing bubbling on the taillights. This thing is beautiful. Multi van over there. Got a Sharon right there. Yo, this thing's sweet. When are we getting a bus? When can we have a bus? When are you buy me one? Yo, it's beautiful in the red. So classic. Yeah, this thing is clean. Like, there's no rust on this thing. I can't believe it. Wow. And you got, even got VW on the plate. How cool is that? Yeah, like this thing when I know you rust like through these areas and through here, this thing is like in perfect shape. How are the rockers looking? Dude, this thing is perfect. There's not any rust on this thing. The red's classic. I love it. Yeah, this one, the multivan. I bet it's the same owner. Actually, I bet it is because this one has the lock on the steering wheel, and so did that one over there. The little like the little lock thing. But they're both like perfect. No rust. This man's winning. I need one of these. All right, like six hours later, we're finally back. And now we can toss a lip on the GTI. I have to say though, one of the most fun things with the Autobahn, or I guess it's just highway driving in general, when you get like two or three cars that you don't know, but all of you like kind of like squat out and just drive for miles and miles. We drove with an Audi S5 all the way from Bonn back to our exit. And we were just cruising the entire way. So much fun. But now we're gonna toss the rear lip on the GTI and see how it looks. We'll start from the middle on this one. Let's see if I can pop it out. Sometimes the OEM lip, is a super pain. There it is. Ooh, one's flying backwards. There it is. Ooh, sometimes you have to go for the back side and actually pop these down. But if you can get a good grip from the front, like in the middle, it'll usually pop out. Like so. There it is. Give it up. Also, if I break this seal up, it's not a big deal. But she's in there good. Wow, it's gonna break. Oh, I don't wanna pull the bumper off. I'm not gonna do it. There it is. You're gonna give it up. You're gonna give it up. That's what I thought. Whew. All right, now with the rear lip, you can go through and actually screw it into the bumper. All of my, well, not with my one, I just put it on there. Never falls off, no issues. So start from one side, slot it in and just work your way around just like so oh, this in here there we go just like so voila look at that it's not going nowhere i like that i've never screwed mine in it's always just been set on in place even hitting the dirt little ring at like 120 mine never came off so on 30 it's not going nowhere. Ooh, it looks good. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad. Like I said, the GTX lip is one of my all-time favorites. Classic look. And the splitter makes it look so much more aggressive. I like it. Like I said, this lip is for the Savoy, but obviously the car is in here right now, so we can't test fit it. But that's not bad. Maybe one for this car too. Now this car also do like very OEM plus and keep like a GTI the deep lip on it, but the Rieger is not bad. And they do offer a handful of side skirts. I have the ones on this car, the GTX ones, but they offer two or three more styles. I like that though. That's sweet. So just envision the Savoy and then that's what you'll see. Not bad, not bad, not bad. All right, there's a full look of the two, GTX for the Golf and then GTX for the Vento. Again, they are different lips. So if you're trying to find one for your Vento, make sure it has the right part number and says Vento. That one will not fit that bumper, that one won't fit that bumper, and so on and so forth. What do you guys think though? Splitter or no splitter? I don't know. I like this look on this car and I like that on that car. I'm not sure what I like better, but they both look good. Definitely for 80 euro for both, huge score. But with that, got in the video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I apologize for the lack of videos this week. It was just a busy week in terms of like me working, um, but for video content, not much is happening. So hopefully this coming up week will be better, but it's supposed to rain all week long. So we'll see how that goes. I do already have the red caliper paint and also I have the like brush on stuff to do the calipers on that car. And I need to get white paint for the wheels, but We'll see how the rain goes. If it's like rainy and cold, uh, not ideal for painting, but like I said, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully more video content this week. Um, I'll try my best. Hope you guys enjoyed. Do not forget to be thankful for every single day. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.